Hey guys, it's Lisa from tocreatorwebsite.com and today I'm going to show you how to use Dreamweaver. This tutorial is going to be for people who just bought Dreamweaver and they're kind of clueless on how to get started. I know it can be a little intimidating because Dreamweaver is a very, very large, robust piece of software, but it's really cool once you learn how to use it. And it's also for people who may be thinking of purchasing Dreamweaver. So what we're gonna do is create a basic template or have, actually we're gonna use one of Dreamweaver's existing templates and I'm gonna show you how to edit it. So the first thing that you should do before you even get started, I'm gonna assume in this video that you already have a web host. You've got a domain name, you've got a web host, which is basically just a place to save your files to the web. You've created an FTP username and password, which is something that's very easy to do. All you do is log into your web hosting control panel, look for the FTP option, and set up a username and password because you'll need it for Dreamweaver if you want to save your content from Dreamweaver right to the web. So let's assume you've done all that. You've got your username and password. You're going to open up Dreamweaver and you're going to go to site, new site. And just FYI, I'm using Dreamweaver CS3. So CS4 is the, the current version, but it's to my understanding, there's not a big difference in between the last or among the last few versions. So hopefully whatever version you're using, you'll be able to follow along. So I went up to site and I selected new and we're gonna just say my site. We're gonna pretend this is your new site. You could put your domain name or whatever you want to hear. I usually put the, the name of my domain right here. So then you put your site's address here and you only have to set this up once. This is, this is just for when you first create your website the first time in Dreamweaver. So we're gonna say no. And you also should create a local folder on your computer to save all of your web files in. You should have a main folder and then inside that folder have subfolders like for your images, your videos and all that. So they're asking you here, where is that folder located? So you tell them and say next. And how do you want to connect to your remote server? Your remote server is just your web host. That's all it means. So you remember I told you to use FTP. So we're going to say FTP. And here is where you enter that FTP information that you got from your web host. So in the host name, it's usually something like yourdomain.com or ftp.yourdomain.com. It, it varies depending on the host. What folder do you want your files to be stored in? This is what your host will have to tell you. But usually for most hosts these days, it's public underscore HTML. And here is where you enter your FTP username and password. And then after you do that, you can say test connection and Dreamweaver will attempt to, to connect to your host. And if it can, it'll say yes, it was successful. And you're ready to now begin saving your site through Dreamweaver. And you only have to do this once, as I said before. So let's pretend that I've already set that up. Actually, I already have, um, and I can show you. So the, the next time you open Dreamweaver, over here on the right side under files, you will see your folder. This is my local folder where my web website is stored. So anytime I need to make an edit to any of my files in Dreamweaver, I just come here and I go to the appropriate folder and I edit the code or edit the design view, whatever view I wanna work in, make the change, right click the file and say put and Dreamweaver will automatically connect to my host and save that page right to the internet. It's that easy, okay? So you definitely wanna set that up. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to set up a basic template. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to File, New, and you're gonna select Blank Template, and we're gonna choose Three Column Fixed. I tend to like Three Column Fixed because my site is the same size no matter what resolution uh, the person is viewing my site in. So if somebody has a large screen or a small screen, my site's gonna be the exact same size, the columns are gonna be the exact same size. The only difference is, depending on how large the screen is, there'll be empty space on the left and right side. So the bigger the screen, the more empty space on the left side. I know some people prefer to use liquid or fluid layouts because the site expands with the resolution or it contracts if, if it's a smaller resolution. Um, that's nice, but at the same time, um, when you do that, you're, you never know how your site's going to look in different browsers. That's why a lot of people use a combination of both, both fixed and fluid or fixed and liquid. 
But for this uh, tutorial, we're just going to do a three column fixed. Keep it simple. And we're going to say create. And as you can see, these are all the different types of templates you can choose from. So it's nice. You have a nice variety. And you're going to say create. And notice you're looking at this code. Looks kind of scary, right, if you don't know what all this means. <laughs> I would highly recommend that you get a basic understanding of CSS and HTML before using Dreamweaver. I know that sounds kind of odd because many of you probably bought or are thinking of buying Dreamweaver because you want help with CSS and HTML. Don't get me wrong, it will help you greatly, but knowing the basics also kind of helps you move around better. So I would highly recommend like going to htmldog.com and spending you know an hour or so on that site, just getting a basic overview of HTML and CSS. That way, everything won't be so foreign when you open up Dreamweaver and it'll help you. So up here, you notice there are three tabs. We've got code, split, and design. Right now, you're looking at the code view. This is all the code that makes up the template that I just selected. And as you can see, Dreamweaver even put comments in here to kind of help you edit this stuff, which is nice. There's also the split view. With the split view, you can see the code and the design. So if you want to edit the code, you can make your edits up here, and then down here you can see immediately how that affected the design. It's kind of nice. I use that mode a lot. And then you've got your design view. This is what it says. It's the design. That's all you see. You don't see the code. So even when you're making changes, so if I type here, Dreamweaver is still making changes in the background in the code. So if I go over to code, you can see what I just typed right there. See how that works? Okay, so now you've got this nice template. It's kind of boring. I'm sure that you want to edit it because who would want a website this drab, right? <laughs> so Dreamweaver does a very good job, I will say, of editing or labeling their template so you can find the different sections in the style sheet. Now, this template that you're looking at, it's using CSS. And CSS, is, it just stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And it's a way to update the styles of your website by simply updating one file. It's, it's what I use for all my sites. It's very, very, very handy. So let's say you have a 50 page site, <clears throat> excuse me, and you wanna update the header on all the pages. Rather than opening up all the pages and editing the line of code, you just open your style sheet and you edit that one line and all of your pages will update. Now, this template is using an internal style sheet because we've only got one page. I would highly recommend if you're going to use, if you're going to have a, a multi-page website to use an external style sheet. That means your style sheet is going to sit outside in a separate file and anytime you want to update your multiple pages, you just update that one file and all of your pages will update. But for the sake of this video and because this is just one page, this is an internal style sheet, meaning the style sheet is actually just located above all the code. So here's the style sheet up here. Here's the site down here. But normally I use an external style sheet. But just to give you a feel for how Dreamweaver works, we're just going to stick with the internal. Okay, so you want to edit your header. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to your styles. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Make sure you have, you go up to window and you have CSS styles checked. Otherwise, you won't get this pane over here. You want this window pane to show over here. Okay, so make sure you have CSS styles checked. Okay, so because I want to edit the header, I'm going to come over here and look for the style called header. And as I said, Dreamweaver does a good job of label, labeling everything so it's easy to find. So you're going to double click header, and this brings up a little box that contains all the different styles you can use for your header. So we want to change the background. So we're going to select background and notice the color is already there. Dreamweaver is using this gray color and that's the hex color code that corresponds to, corresponds to that color. And you're going to click the box. Let's say you don't know the hex co color code but you know the color that you want to use. Then you just use your eyedropper tool and let's make it red. And you point to it, click, it gives you what the hex color is, and you say, okay. And just like that, your header changes. And if you want to see what this looks like in the code, you can hit the split or the code view. And remember I told you the style sheet is located at the top of the page. And see this line that says background color? 
that's what makes the header that color. So see this line here? It corresponds with this line over here. So if you don't want to be bothered with the code, you can ignore the code. You can stay in the design view and just come over here and click header to make the changes. Okay, see how that works? So let's say you don't want a color. You want a background image. We're going to go back to header. And we're going to go back to background. And we're going to go to browse because we want an image, not a color. We're going to go to background image, browse. And we're going to get the image from our computer. Again, it's very important to have all of your files and images saved in a nice little concise folder. So we're going to choose this image here. And it may look familiar to you. It's actually the image that I'm using on my site and my blog right now. So just like that, the background image for your header changes. So you can use the same tutorial and apply it to the rest of the sections on the site. So let's say you want to change the background color of this left column here. It's called sidebar one. So you come over here, you look for sidebar one, double click, go to background, go to color, and let's make it a light yellow. And you just say okay. And just like that, it's changed. Now, one thing Dreamweaver taught me a lot about is that the it's, it taught me a lot about the different styles that you can use with CSS. Um, one thing I didn't know up until a couple years ago is that you can do different types of borders with CSS. Say you want to add a right side border, just on the right side, not all the way around, on your sidebar here. Well, you come back over to sidebar one. This time we're going to select border. And we're going to uncheck same for all because we're only going to put the border on the right side. So we're going to select right. And look at all the different types of borders. See, this is what I was talking about. You can do a dotted border, a dashed border, a solid, a double border. For this sake, let's, let's do a dashed just so you can see. A lot of people don't like the dashed look, but it's an option if you like it. And now you choose the width. Let's do a thick border. And then if you want to change the color, you click this box and let's choose like a brown and say OK. And just like that, you've got a thick dashed brown border. Now, I don't particularly like that myself. Let's say you want to change that and make it thin. You go back to border. Let's do a solid thin and say OK. And just like that, you've got a thin border on the right side of your column. So are you starting to see, hopefully, how convenient CSS is and how easy it is to use Dreamweaver if you understand how it works? So uh, let's say you want to add a hyperlink, a link to another site. One way to do it is to select the text that you want to hyperlink, come up here to Insert Hyperlink, and type in the address. And target, let's say we want it to open in another page. We'll just say underscore blank instead of the same page. We'll go OK. And just like that, it creates a hyperlink. Now, we were talking about CSS. Let's say you want to create a new style. Let's say you want to create a style that will allow you to add some disclaimer text or some small text. And you want to be able to use this text in various sections of your site. Maybe you want your footer text to all use this same small text. So one thing that you can do is you can create a new style. So you come up here to text, CSS styles, then you click new. Now, anytime you want to create a style that can be used repeatedly throughout your design, you always choose class. That's the best way to remember it. If it's a style like large text, small text, text of a certain color, that's a class. And you can apply this class to any tag, table, a paragraph tag, whatever. So we're going to name it small text. And we're going to say, OK. Now, right away, it pops up this box again. And you're going to declare the style for this small text. So let's give it a font. Let's do Arial. And, and why does CSS do this? Notice how it says Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. Which font is it going to show? It's always going to show the first font that you have available 
if that person has that font available on their browser. So if the person viewing your site does not have Arial on their browser, then it will go to the next one and so forth. So that's why with CSS, you can define multiple fonts. You can say, oh, if the person doesn't have this font, then use this font. So that's what the string of fonts is for. So the size of the font, let's make it a 10, which is smaller than the size that we have there. And let's give it a color. Let's give it a blue. How about that? So now we just created a new style. So over here on the right, now you can see it added a new style called small text. So let's go down to our footer and let's say you want all the footer text to be small and to look just like what we just created. Let's type, this is small text. We want to apply that new style that we just created. So you select the text. Actually, let's bring up our properties menu, which is right down here where this arrow is. Okay. So we selected the text and we want to apply the style we just created. You can come down here to your properties menu, select the, the style drop down, and look, there's the class we just created. And it even makes it look like it should. See, it's blue and small. So you select it, and just like that, your text is now small. So let's say you want your right bar column to look the same. You want, to, you want it to use that same style of text. You would just select the text, Go back to your properties menu, go back to style, apply it, and it will use that same text. And let's look at our code. Let's go to our code view. See this tag right here, P class equals small text? Any text that's wrapped around this tag will use the same style that we created, that small blue text. So once you start to get comfortable with how Dreamweaver and CSS works, you can create as many different styles as you want. Okay, so let's say you want to insert a contact form or a feedback form so your visitors can email you. You would just come up here to insert form. And as you can see, here are all the different fields for your form. You got a checkbox, radio button, list, menu, and you can just set up a feedback form just like that. If you want to insert media, like say you have a flash video you want to insert, you would just come up to insert media, choose the type of media you have, and Dreamweaver, Dreamweaver will insert the media right into the page wherever you have the cursor. So hopefully you can see with this video how robust and how powerful Dreamweaver really is. And you just saw a small piece of it. Dreamweaver can do so, so much more. I just wanted to show you how to edit a basic template. It's really not that difficult to use once you get the basic understanding of CSS. And again, I would highly recommend going to htmldog.com and just spending an hour, half hour at least, and just get an overview of how CSS and HTML works. You'll find it's really not that threatening. And hopefully this video has shown you that. So... That concludes my Dreamweaver tutorial. Hopefully it's taught you a lot and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention before I leave. I created this website in Dreamweaver and this is the very first site that I've created from scratch. I didn't use any templates. I just opened up Dreamweaver and I started coding right in the code view. And while I know the design is not real cutting edge, it's a big deal for me because just a few years ago, I knew very little about CSS. So this shows you what you can do if you just have a little patience and you practice using Dreamweaver, maybe pick up a book or two. I, I actually bought Dreamweaver CS3 for dummies, which really, really helped me. So just practicing with Dreamweaver and reading that book, it helped me create this site from scratch. So shows you what you can do. All right, I'm really gone now. See you guys, bye-bye.